Hi, this is Paul Lynch from the Tech Model Channel, and in regards to my next build, I was going to be doing the Tacom Bulldozer that served in Iraq with the American Army and the US Marines, but I've decided to build this one. Uh, it's got a, a little bit of uh, family issue history in some ways. Um, this is a British cruiser tank A34 Comment, and it's Bronco kit, and the kit number is three four CB three five zero one zero SP, and it's in one thirty fifth scale. This is this is an uh, upgraded, I believe it's a new mould from the upgraded original comic kit that was brought out. So this is going to be an interesting build. But the main thing for me is um, I there paced what passed away last year in May. So I thought myself <clears throat> this when this cup kit came out, I was I was been looking for a comic. I know you could get the matchbox small 172nd scale one with a little dry armour, but I didn't particularly like that. But when this came out, I thought I'll grab it. The reason being is my dad used to work on these in, in his national service. And you used to talk about it. when I mentioned I saw a comment in a comment in the uh, Bobbington Tank Museum. He straight away said, "Yes, yeah, so I, I worked on those on the engines during my national service." So that's why this tank has a bit of sentimental value in that way. I will be building it not as a post-war vehicle, though as actually a wartime vehicle from the end of World War II. Too. So that's where we're going to go with this. Now, as I said, I'm not going to do an inbox review because I think it's been done quite a few times and I think this one's been done already on YouTube. Uh, so what I just want to do is just do an open the box and have a look to see what's in there and then get on with the build and starting that tomorrow. So anyway, let's get into the box. Just before we go around, on the side of the box we've got a bit about the decals. There's a little sheet of decals. We've got the photo etch parts are in now. On the other side of the box, We've got a bit of the track links where they, they click into place. I think you still have to put a glue on them. I have actually sent for the workable tracks for this kit. They're not here yet because I've only just done it. But that's what I've done. And also a metal barrel. Now I may, may or may not use a barrel because a barrel was quite cheap. So whether I use it or not is a, a matter of thing. I'll just see if I can do anything with the barrel that we've got. <clears throat> I have got these um, these scrapers used for, for anyway, there's four, four versions there. And they're, they're plastic scrapers, and so they've got different sizes, so they might work perfectly for the barrel. So I'm going to see, try it on that if I can. So there you go. And it's got a bit of detail on the back with the edge in, and the edge is open. So there's not much detail inside, but, but it, uh, I might just close it up anyway. But I'm definitely going to do something. If when I get into the kit, and I think I have seen it already, the driver's area has got periscopes. If there is any way of putting a clear periscope in there, I'm going to do it. Because I've still got some of the Tamiya from my M1A2 that I did with Buddy Bill Switcher. I've still got that in the cupboard. So I can use that to actually make the periscopes, clear periscopes. Using the um, Gator glue, which is white glue anyway, which dries clear. And see if I can do it for the driver's hatch as well and everything else. So we'll have a look when we get in. So that's basically what's on the side of the box and on the top. It's nice. Nice picture on top of the box, I must admit, quite a nice looking picture. It's been actually look quite nice cut out and stuck on the photograph, but I've got a photograph of the real vehicle, so it doesn't matter. Right, here we go then. I'm put that over the way. Oh, I'm going to turn it upside down, as I usually do, sorry. Right, do the instructions in a minute, we just put them to one side. I put them just there, I'll remove the box, there we go. Right, here we go, what have we got here? We've got, we got uh, oh, there's yes, here it is. They've actually got a card, that reminds you of Dragon, doesn't it? The old Dragon method. Decals, they look really nice. Can't see what they've made, but um, just by look without going in the packet, I could go in the packet. Actually, I'll just have a quick look, see how in there, because I haven't done this. They look lovely, very thin, very little carrier film around the edges, very little. So hopefully, with any luck, they're going really nice. There we go, I'm going to put them straight back in the packet. As I said, I don't like undoing packets normally, but that one's a poly one, the way you, the old zips tight seal. There you go. And the photo edge parts look nice and all. Looks like the side of the panniers, the fender side skirts are there. Um, not sure what they are yet until I get into the kit. I know that, but that is, that's the engine grill that goes back for the exhaust. And I know there's um, the back arc, the bit that sits up, looks nice. So anyway, that's the exhaust area, and that's going to look quite nice anyway. And you will still see that. Right, over there in the box. Right, this is the wheel sprues. Now the moulds on here look really good. Yep, definitely. Sprockets are very fine. There's no flash that I can see, which is always a good sign. Very good. Yep, now you can see the part of the gun gun stuff here because you've got the old... The old um, 
the gun and gun raise and lower to get into target. Anyway, but so all the details there look good. And as I said, when we're building it, there's two fire extinguishers there that look quite nice and all. Anyway, so that's very fine. That's two sprues with all the road wheels. Upper turret. Now, so I can't see no periscopes at the moment, but I think there's another bit. Anyway, this all looks really nice. This is all the gun area. Ah, yeah, that's the um, <clears throat> front of the turret. Now, I've sent for a resin bit there that's got the canvas over the top. So that's what I'll be doing, because I know it's, most of the World War II ones have got a bit of canvas on the front. The one in Bombardier Museum, funny enough, hasn't got that canvas on it, but there you go. But yeah, this looks good. Some of the hatches there might have to be cut off on a bit of wire put in its place to give you that proper feel. But I'll see where they go. If that's the inside, um, I've just answered my own question now. No, that is that is the the top, so you might probably get some handles on that. There is there is some, some mould marks on the underneath, but of course all these things are underneath and they've shaved off and you won't see them anyway. So all the actual plastic sink marks are actually under the out of sight, which is good. The drivers and the, and the gunner's positions on the front hatch look really interesting. Good, let's put that over there. That looks nice, that does look nice. Right, ah, I can. On the periscope, it looks like I'll be able to paint it like I did my Tammy one, not gluing it in place, and be able to take it off after it's all been painted in situ, and then put the actual visors in place. It's not going to be big visors, but it's going to look like, but they have, you can do it, so that's good. I haven't seen the driver's position yet, so whether you can on that or not, whether you can put periscopes there or not, I'm not sure yet. But yeah, the moles look really nice. And there's that shield, over it goes over the exhaust, although you'll still see the mesh inside, this is the shield, as, as, the stack to, as the smoke, instead of going straight up in the end, it sends it backwards along at ground level with fumes and exhaust fumes. That's what I'm presuming. But there you go. So that's going to be okay. That looks nice. A lot of details and all crisp, they look nice. Nice and sharp. <coughs> right, as you can see, there isn't going to be a lot to this build. And this is the upper body. And there's the actual periscopes. Now, whether when I get to that bit, because I don't want to take them out of the packet, I might be able to get some glass in those. So it'd be worth having those those actually glass. So, moulding, you can say it's not going to be a massive tank, but the moulding on it is really good and everything's really crisp. All these handles, though, could possibly be replaced with a bit of wire. Have a look at that. I'm going to have a look when I do it. So, tracks. Single link tracks. But I've actually ordered the Bronco set that goes with this, which are click and they actually physically work. So I've got these, and what have these got? Some solid guide holes, and I think the tank did have, yeah, it did have solid guide holes. I'll look on my photograph anyway. Right, so the tracks look okay anyway. We've got some more wheels in there, not sure what they are, I think they're spares. Soon find out, but they're in there, they look lovely. But there's no glass that I can see at all for the headlights. I don't think it's even got headlights on this vehicle, perhaps it hasn't. Let's have a look. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, it has got one light and you have to paint it silver. You have to paint it silver up there on the turret. So, to be honest, I might drill that out and use some, you try and find an, uh, an element, element to go into it. So it looks much better. Anyway, but that's okay, we can get around that. Good. Right, so as you can see, that is the Comet from Bronco 135th scale, kit number CB35010SP. I'm going to put the instruction book at the bottom now. Really, uh, I'm going to go through that. Sorry, missed that. Anyway, so I'm going to put all these bits back in the in the in their box. Here we go, back in the proper load. There we go. I can see there's not many parts to it really, so this will be a, a reasonably quick build. And the card with all the bit decals on it. Yeah, we might be slowing me down as the periscopes, but that's not and the the light. Right, here we go. Just a little bit of interest. Usual safety stuff and about what you've got to do, bend, glue, drill, um, do not cement, that type of thing. There's not always a lot of that. And what's that? Insert glue for metal. So it's instant glue. So there's, there's some metal bits on here. Could it do with a photo edge? Right. All we've been through the sprues, we can see them all laid out nicely. So you can actually check to make sure you've got everything in which we have. Um, four spares there, track links and string. String I'm not going to use, I should make some copper wire for the anything to do with cables because I don't like the string, it just doesn't seem to look, work very good. Decals, we've already had a look, look at those. 
Right, all it goes now for sections one, two, three, four are all to do with building the lower hull and the suspension and the road wheels in place. Um, I've got, I haven't got the quick wheels thing in this, but I have got this thing that I think Norm uses it. I've seen Norm use it. Similar to this, I haven't used it yet, but it's got all the various size and I saw, saw his version of it and I thought, why not? I should tape over and spray, pick the wheel size I want and I'll now just spray, move it to the next one and carry on doing it. Unless I've got a quick wheel set that, that will match this. I don't think I have, so this will be the method I'm using. So pretty good, all different sizes, just like he's got on his kit. I think it was a good idea. I must probably turn it that way so I can spray on the clear so I can see the measurements left there. But that looks quite good. Be doing that with the old when I get round to spraying the, the road wheels. What you do is you spray spray the whole road set of road wheel together in the colour of the vehicle and then you basically use that to spray the wheel hubs to give you the, the centre perfect centre circle. So one to four is all to do with road wheel building. And then when you get to section five, you start building the up, upper hole areas. Building through and it carries on the way through. And it's still upper hole hole all the way till you get to number nine. So that's right through to number nine. Now the option I'll be doing, because I quite like it, is the one I showed you earlier on with the actual rear rear screen of the for the exhaust area and that cover that actually blows the hot air away and long, long the, the ground instead of up in the air to give some sort of plume if there was a bit of diesel smoke coming up. That's what I'm pre presuming that is, the exhaust area. Right, so then after it goes to number 10, starts on the turret all the way around. Got the any internal gun, stood up to 13, it's still turret. Then you get onto number 14 and that's the last bit of the turret. Then, we get round to late production, 1945 Comet, early and late vernish, so that's both. And then, then there's a post-war version. So there's two versions of this backplate, and I'll be picking the um, picking this version, which is late war production, 1945, and early to late version. So you can use both. Right, so that's okay. Looking at that, I'm going to get to it. Then you start building the tracks, which I as I said I'm going to use the Bronco set. And then we're basically putting small details on the turrets, fitting the turret. <coughs> uh, what's this doing? Oh, putting little miniature lights on both sides. They're little running lights, I presume they are. Then the, the aerial, which is um, mega plastic. I'm not going to because the other day, where are they? I've got some somewhere. And... I think I've put them, put them away for safety. But I've got some carbon fibre aerials. They're quite reasonable for macro armour. And they're really large, so you can pick to the size you want. And the good thing is when you glue them in place, being carbon fibre, it'd be pretty pliable. So, that's that one. And then we get into the colour scheme. So, oh no, we're still on the other side. Still doing more. This is to do with the cables and spanner bits. Caution. Post-war. post war post for late production, so that won't be for me. And uh, Mark one B early late version. So I'll have to be very careful with that. And you've got the area up the top there still. So that's basically we just make talking about the area on both those areas, what to do and what not to do, which ones you make it, what to make it for each, and putting a bit of extra cable in here for the actual smoke detectors. Smoke uh, smoke um, mortar chargers on the side. <clears throat> Excuse my voice, sorry. The old um, smoke smoke canisters. Right then. So, first one is option one, Armoured Duke, the 1st Royal Tank Regiment, 7th Armour Division, Germany, not April 1945. Now, I quite like this one, the Iron Duke, and I've got a feeling a load of people have people to make it, but that's possibly the one I'm going to go for. Just have a look at the others first. I've really looked. Um, North... North March, uh, Germany, it's in Germany again in March. Royal Tank Range, 22nd Armoured Brigade, 11th Armoured Division. And um, that one looks quite nice and all. Yep, that looks quite nice. Next one is uh, Belgium, 1945. Oh, there's good choices here. They'll make my manual, manual up to now. It's all been. March 1945, so still in the war, just coming out of the war. Towards the end of the war, then you've got Crusader. Uh, 29th Armour Brigade Division, Germany in April 1945. And then we start getting into 
Hong Kong in 57. So this was in 1957. The rest of it's so late war and just a, just post-war and one or two issues. So anyway, so I won't be building this one and I definitely won't be building that one. That's a training unit, a finished training unit. So mine will be the Iron Duke, April 1945. Or Yep, I think it'll be the Iron Duke. Anyway, I'll make a decision between option one and option two later on. I do like the American star on the back. I do quite like that. Right then, so that's the instructions. So basically, that is my next build, and I'll be starting it this week. And that's going to do a bit some tomorrow. I've got a busy day tomorrow. My car's got to be MOT, so uh, I'll be doing that early in the morning. And a service as well. So, right. So that is my build uh, now for the, the next mixed build I'm going to start um, tomorrow. So anyway, that's it. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And uh, I'll see you with my progress reports on this build. And if there's any issues I have, I will explain what, how I got around them. And uh, thank you very much for watching. So see you next time. Thank you.